Hello folks, I'm Dean with Dean's Woodworking. Welcome to the shop. Y'all come on in and make yourself comfortable. Tonight, we're going to answer the question, how long before I need to sharpen? I can't tell you how often I get the question is, how often should I sharpen my bowl gouge? I don't know that there is a real answer to that question. Tools are going to vary, wood's going to vary. Uh, so there's, there's too many variables to actually really answer the question. However, today we're going to take my favorite half inch bowl gouge. I just sharpened it and made a single cut. We've got pine here on the uh, lathe. Why did I choose pine? It's a very soft wood. If your tool's not sharp, you're going to get tear out. I just made one cut across this. There's your uh, there's your end grain right there. Here's your end grain on the other side. So you can see some of the little pitting, some of the little tear out. Even with a freshly sharpened tool, me running at uh, a pretty high speed, oh, I guess about 1800 RPMs, and taking my time on that cut. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a line along this. And once I make that line, I'm going to use that as my guide. I'm not going to cut past that so we can see that original cut. So I'm going to go ahead and get, uh, get started and let's make a few cuts and then we'll check it again. One more thing folks, this is, uh, I'm not going to mention the brand because I'm not here advertising a tool. It really doesn't matter what tools you use. This is not the most expensive bowl gouge. It's by far from the cheapest. I'm thinking this bowl gouge was, uh, last time I looked it up, about $90, okay? So that gives you some place to go. If you've got a cheaper bowl gouge that doesn't have as good a metal, you may have to sharpen more often. And if you've got one of the high-end bowl gouges, you may not have to sharpen as much. Why did I choose this one? Because I have some cheaper ones and I have some more expensive ones. I wanted to get something that was kind of middle of the road so we could get a good look, idea of how long it needed, how long it could go before it needed to be sharpened. Before we get started cutting, let's measure this. If I put this on here, we're getting four and about four and three quarters. And we're just going to come in and we're going to make cuts across here. There's one. Make the second one. I'm going to stop and check it there. Now you may be asking, why are you checking it so quick? I could already feel the difference on how hard I was having to push to get that in here. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Wow. That's a huge difference already in just three cuts, guys. Okay, folks, I'm going to slow down the cut, and I'm going to try to get as good a cut as I can possibly get on this next pass. We'll make one pass, and we'll see how it looks, okay? So this is the, I just made three cuts. I'd already made one. So this is the fifth cut I'm making with this bowl gouge. Okay, that was a very slow cut, intended specifically 
to try to keep from getting a lot of tear out and let's see how we did. Let's see here. Here we go, here's our side grain right there. Not too bad, nowhere near as good as this. Let's go over to the other side. And again, you got this right up here. Nowhere near, this cut is nowhere near as good as that one. So that's five cuts on a four and three quarter inch piece of wood. You can definitely see the difference. I'm going to go ahead and turn around. I'm going to sharpen the bowl gouge and come back and we're going to make one more cut halfway of this cut. And let's just see what it looks like, okay? We've got a new edge on it. You'll notice I didn't grind a lot on it. I just sharpened it. Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Okay, just, just for record's sake, I'm gonna cut into that line. Okay, folks, so this was the original cut right here. Pretty smooth. Hopefully y'all can see that tear out right there. Came back and made another sharp, we sharpened the tool. And you can see a significant difference there. Let's go to the other side. Again. Up here was the original cut, very little tear out. This is after five cuts, quite a bit of tear out. And then we resharpened and I made one cut right in here and you have again very little tear out. I think you see just a little bit right in this area right here but not much and hardly any right through here. Folks, I wanted to do this little demo, not because I expect anybody to sharpen their bowl gouge every two or three cuts, but I just wanted you to realize that as this thing's turning around, you cut off an inch across, it's over a foot around this thing, you stop and think, that thing's turning at 1800 RPMs and you cut for a minute, that's 1800 feet you are cutting and you're expecting that edge to hold up to it. What that does is increase your sanding tremendously. Now my suggestion is Go ahead and do your roughing cuts, get the shape you want, then sharpen that bowl gouge, make another cut, maybe even sharpen it again and make another cut. So those final couple of cuts, you're making them with an absolute sharp tool and that's going to reduce your sanding so much. Hopefully this little demo helped you guys and it'll make you realize, stop and sharpen. If you're having to push that tool through the wood, it's dull. If you've 
turn a bowl, a half a bowl, if you've been turning for 15 minutes or 10 minutes, guess what? That tool is dull. So again, hopefully this helped. If you like what you're seeing, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell so that you get notified when I upload a video. Most of all, thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and happy turning.